I got to say, Baba! Hey, what's up, party people? I'm out here with Caleb from Brownells, who's going to talk us through some of their uh, retro line. Uh, these are essentially clones of the early AR-15 and M-16 rifles, right? right? Yep, exactly. So can you talk us through, the, well, the first one that's not here today is the Proto? The Proto, yes. We don't have the Proto out here today, um, but yeah, that would be the first in the, the series. It, it wasn't an actual service rifle, uh, the Proto, it was a prototype. Um, but yeah, that would be the first one. Okay, and that's that's obviously the prototype, the original design that Eugene Stoner came up with. It had the uh, that sort of trigger-shaped charging handle up here on top underneath the carry handle? Yep, that's the very distinctive difference. Yeah. Okay, so it looked a lot like the AR-10. Yeah. The it, original AR-10. It's, it's basically a shrunken down AR-10, yeah. Okay, so talk me through this. What is this one? So that is your 601. Uh, that is going to be the first in the lineup. That one was in service from 1959 to 1964. And this comes standard with Magpul uh, gray furniture, right? Yeah, Mag Magpul. <laughs> that was Magpul service furniture. Then? That was the thing. So this color, though, this this is period correct. Yes, that is the. Uh, it's yeah. There may be a you know, shade off, but yeah, yeah. In general, that is the period were, correct scheme. They were. It's it's. <laughs> I kind of wish they had kept this because it's a really handsome color with it's it kind is. of almost greenish gray. It is, yeah. It kind of makes the furniture pop. So we've got A1 sights on it. Correct. Uh, a kind of weird shaped charging handle for most of us, not what we're used to. Yeah, that's a distinctive feature on this one is that triangle shaped charging handle. Uh, that's that's the one you're gonna. That's what you're gonna notice first when you pick it up. So we don't have the sort of curved finger. Exactly. Okay. I'm not an expert on on all, all of this progression through here, but what stands out to me is it doesn't have a fence around the magazine release, right. and this pivot pin looks quite a bit different. It is, yes, and that is the first design of that receiver. So yeah, those, those are those are the, the original, uh, that's the original scheme of those, those first early production parts. Okay. Talk to me about the finish on this bolt and, and carrier. Yeah, so that's your standard uh, chrome-plated bolt and bolt carrier group. That was period correct. Okay. Uh, what? It, so to my inexpert eye, what am I missing about this that's different? Uh, an A1 stock. A1 stock. Uh, you have your, your handguard. Uh, if you look at your grip, you have this sling loop area here. That's, uh, that's a pretty distinctive okay. difference. Um, going on from there, uh, obviously no forward assist on this model. Uh, your door is also going to be different than what you see on see your, your standard ARs. Okay, so there's no compartment for a cleaning kit. When did that show up? So that's going to show up in your A2s. So none of these are going to have the, uh, okay. the cleaning okay. kit compartment. So all the the A1 stocks had no Correct, yeah. Okay. A1 stocks were, were plain on the rear. Okay. This rifle was obviously not this rifle and obviously not a semi-auto only um, but this rifle was a service rifle? Uh, yes, this one was. This one was a uh, primarily for the Air Force, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And is this, this flash hider through this flash hider are both A1? Yes, those are your standard three-prong um, okay. early styles on okay. those. So talk to me about this one. What's different besides the obvious color of the furniture? Right, so you have your color, obviously the that furniture color that you mentioned, um, and you now have a forward assist. Okay. Moving on With from the, there. Yeah. the teardrop then, shape. Yep, and then uh, you notice that the lower receiver is a little bit different as well. Uh, you now okay. have that front takedown pin with the detent and yep. retainer. Okay. Uh, still no fence around the mag still, magazine release. Yep, still no fence. Still the same style stock, but we're now a different color? Correct, yeah. Same style, different color. Uh, this one here is your service rifle from 1964 to 1967. Okay. So this is consistent with an M16? Yes, the M16. Not A1. Not, e, not A1. We're still in the E1 area okay. here. Um, did it... Did it have officially the E1 nomenclature? Did troops know it as the M16 E1 or was this just the M16? 
Um, commonly, you probably just, the troops okay. were just familiar with it as the M16, their Mattel toy. But we get into this one, and this was the M16A1? Yes, now we're getting into the A1. This is your primary, uh, I, I would say that this is the most common Vietnam era okay. uh, M16. So my dad was Big Red One in Vietnam. Uh, I think he was, I could be wrong on this, I want to say 66, 67. Okay, yep. Would he have had one of these? Yeah, so that one there is going to be from 67 up until the uh, 80, I want to say 82, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's a very high chance he did have one of those. And the distinctive difference on this one is, of course, the uh, cage area on the lower receiver. Uh -huh. And then, of course, your standard birdcage flash hider now. Okay. Uh, anything else on this one? Yeah, so um, the main other difference you're going to see between these two, uh, you have your phosphated, you know, parkerized bolt carrier group um, versus that chrome plated one we saw here. Let's uh, just pop these open. Sure. Yeah, so. So on the right. Yep, on the right here, this is your chrome plated, and then moving to the phosphated. Awesome. What was the twist rate through all of these? Are, were they all 1 and 12? Yes, uh, the, all of these, these era, the E1s, A1s, they were all 1 and 12 twists. Yeah, so before that one, in between these two here, you have your 605, which was a, it wasn't issued, it was more of an experimental. Between this and this rifle? Yeah, okay. and it was the, uh, that, that was going to be your short barrel. So it's still rifle length gas system and everything, but shorter barrel. Um, okay. And that was a, that was a prototype. Never, I'm guessing like that didn't work great because uh, dwell time? Yeah, um, with ammunition then, dwell time, gas port sizes, things like that, um, it, it wasn't as reliable. Um, the one we make now, obviously, we have a lot more research of and course. information that goes into it, so it, it works just fine with that gas system. So dwell time is, as a bullet's traveling down the barrel, it will reach the gas port. High-pressure gases get diverted off through the gas tube, hit the gas key, pushes the tail of the bolt away from the bolt carrier, which causes the, the bolt to cycle, loads another round, the cycle repeats. The dwell time is the period of time between when the bullet passes that port and gas is able to reach the gas tube mm -hmm. to the period to when the bullet exits the barrel. The dwell time is that period of time that the gas pressure is high in the system. Right, so, so yeah, exactly. Dwell time is the, um, that's the time that the pressure from the cartridge is acting on the gas system actively. That's your dwell time. So if you have a very short dwell time, you have to make up for that by having higher pressure. Exactly. And you can get that higher pressure with a larger port or different ammo or you can somewhat make up for it with maybe a lighter carrier or a lighter recoil spring, but there's a lot of other trade-offs that you get when you yeah. move things around. So it makes sense that back then when they tried that, that use, like you said, with the ammo that they had, it I, I can see how that would be pretty touchy, especially in field condition. Right, absolutely. Dirty, yeah, and of course it, it, it takes more pressure to cycle a, a dirtier firearm. So. Roger. So this last one, I think a lot of us would would say that this is probably one of the cooler rifles out there. Um, all of these retro rifles have that nostalgic, just cool yeah, guy thing, but absolutely. this one got really famous. The XM177, which of course all the the go fast, uh, um, the special forces, the long range patrols and all that. They wanted the, the lighter, shorter rifle, right? Correct. Yeah. And again, this one was, uh, in service with this one, the 1967, uh, 82. So this had like an 11 and a half inch barrel. Uh, that was a 12.7 inch barrel on that one. Outstanding. And obviously this flash hider is pinned and welded to yes. make it non F NFA Absolutely. and there's no baffles or anything inside of this flash hider right. because the original XM177 flash hider was technically a suppressor, even though that wasn't really the intention, right? Yes. The ATF uh, considers it, yeah. it a silencer because it did barely reduce the report. Yeah, it uh, it, it gets a little weird when you start dealing with the, uh, the machining of the original one. So, yeah. yeah. 
So you had to you, you had to make a flash hider that works mm -hmm. and looks similar, but won't be called a si silencer by the ATL. Correct. Yeah, and okay. that's what this one is, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so talk me through how how close is the XM177 to a Car 15? Um. So yeah, the Car 15. Um, moving on to that, and now you have your aluminum stock. Um, but yeah, there's there's some similarities there. Um, Visually, the Car 15 looked essentially the same thing as this. Yeah, right? if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, just just seeing them side by side, you, you probably you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Okay. And for those of you young punks out there that are just starting to get into AR-15s, you may not remember back in the 90s when <laughs> there were like a couple of different styles of rifle. Pretty much everything that was shorter, people. In the civilian world, people referred to as a Car 15, even if it had a 16-inch barrel. Right. Or it was it was not a 20-inch H bar, so people called it a Car 15. But but the Car 15 was an actual um, type classified service rifle, right? Right. Yes. That's uh, yeah. The Car 15 is a specific designation. Okay. So yeah. And the XM177 predated the Car 15. Correct. But both were probably used in conjunction with each other right? yeah there was uh since this one was in service all the way to 82 uh you you had some overlap there okay and of course the the go fast the special forces the lerps and all that really liked the shorter lighter right. absolutely what, as cool as this is what i find kind of ironic is that as they were developing this they wanted a shorter rifle they want a lighter rifle and already an m16 is really light I right. mean, it's got that pencil thin barrel. Yep. Sure, it's 20 inches, but I mean, it's a very light rifle, especially compared to most of the other service rifles that were in that were extant at the time, like the Fowl. Yeah, <laughs> you that uh, your M14s. Uh, yeah, night and day difference in weight. Yeah, but <laughs> Americans, being what we are, we wanted we wanted more more of everything. We wanted more lighter and more um, more shorter. So they end up with this shorter, lighter barrel. And they found that that was stupid loud and big, huge flash and all that. So they wanted this huge flash suppressor. And now we put this big flash suppressor out in front of this shorter barrel and we end up back to being almost as long as the 20 inch. Yep, we do, yeah. Well, so out of all of these, my favorite is this. I, I think that this just has the, it's just overflowing with the, the cool guy. And the more I look at it, the more detail I notice, um, I see now that you pointed it out, <laughs> that all of these delta rings are cylindrical. There's right. so many details on these rifles that if you tried to put together a really, really correct retro rifle, say 10 years ago before right. you guys came out with any of these, it would be difficult to source some of these parts. Like, where would you find a delta ring that's correct for that period? Um, you really wouldn't, honestly. You would uh, basically just be searching the web for it and paying a ton Maybe of money. Maybe an antique somewhere. And yeah. For that, a range toy, that'd be that'd be pretty expensive. Yeah, and the parts were out there, um, but they were scarce and, and expensive. You know, everybody's going to have a different opinion on, like, which one's cooler. And, of course... The only reason people buy stuff like this is because it's fun. Guns right. are fun. We like shooting guns. We like having guns. We like looking at guns because guns are great. So what you find most interesting or just coolest out of these various retro guns is going to be a little different than me, but I love this style. When I first started getting into AR-15s back when Dart was new, uh, one of the first rifles that I put together was... Uh, a Model 1 sales XM177-ish, but, you know, it had, like, an A2 carry handle, 11.5-inch <laughs> right. barrel with a pinned and welded flash hider that wasn't really that correct. And it was still close enough for me at the time, where, like, from a distance, it looks like an XM177, so that's cool enough. But these are so... Correct. Like everything that you can get right, mechanically, cosmetically, all of that, it is an M16A1 or an XM177, except for that 
third hole. Right. Yeah, and with that being said, when you start getting into all the details and everything like that, it really becomes, uh, for me anyways, more of functional art in the form yeah. of a firearm. Yeah. Well, Caleb, I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you for being so generous in your time and in your cool toys to play with. Let's shoot some of these. Let's do it. When the time comes, there'll be plenty of them laying around on the ground. I'm a lead farmer, mother I got to say, Baba! Charlie Toad, sir! All right, guys, thanks for watching. This is a lot of fun to shoot. Guns are fun. These retro guns are a blast. I really enjoy, I like shooting ARs anyway. You know I'm a huge fanboy for ARs, but these are particularly fun just because they get all the details right and you can kind of do your, your grown up cosplay if you want. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I love to hear your comments on these things even when you're wrong. Have a great day.